Well, good afternoon, everybody. We're going to try again. Sincere apologies for the delay. It was obviously a problem with the technology, which we hope we have resolved. Uh, we made the decision that, given that we've only got one item on the agenda, that we can cover it in the time available, since we're all convened. It's better to continue with the meeting than to cancel it. So, hopefully, we can now proceed. Recording of the meeting, please can ask that the live stream is started and verbal confirmation provided when we are broadcasting. Um, just continue for a moment along with this. Yeah, I'm going to continue and I hope that everybody can hear, assuming uh, people didn't get what we said at the beginning. Starting again, welcome to the meeting of the Children and Young People Screening Committee. The agenda papers and other relevant information for the meeting are available for public viewing on the Hellerfordshire Council website. The Council is streaming this meeting live on the Hellerfordshire Council channel and also making a recording, which hopefully is now working. The recording will be available by the Council's website. You're getting a repeat yeah. on a loop. I think we need to. Sorry, Chair, I think we need. I think that's it. <laughs> You must be going right through the YouTube. You know, only those of you on remote heard that. Yeah. All we got back was my own words fed back to us. Mm. Three times. Okay. Twice. Well, I like the sound of your voice. <laughs> <laughs> once is enough. <once> <laughs> there is a limit. Yeah, there are limits indeed. Another passage, please, Chair. Thank you. Sorry, you can carry on just from the passage. Thank you. Just check that we're okay now. So, are we recording or don't we know? We are recording. Yes. So, would you want me to start where I left off? Yeah, you please, sir. Okay. So, uh, just to continue with the instructions, other attendees often this is a third paragraph and record our public meeting, provided that it does not disrupt the business of the meeting. If you do not wish to film your photograph, please identify yourself so that anyone who intends to record the meeting can be made aware. One person of the public identifies myself for that. Thank you. To ensure the recording quality is maintained, could members speak as clearly as possible, keep background noise to a minimum, and ensure that mobile phones and other devices are turned to silent. So, a formal welcome to everybody. We do have a quorum of members in the room today, as well as Democratic Services Officers. We also have uh, Ben Bow, who's our uh, clerk for the day, Simon Kang, Democratic Services, who have both been putting their hair out, so I'm very successfully trying to uh, get this working. <laughs> Hopefully it now is. We welcome Jean Ellis too from Health, Health Watch. Thank you, Jean, for joining us. And a number of the committees joining us remotely. So here we go to test. I will now ask you to confirm that you can hear us and check we can hear you. Councillor Tony Fagan. Yeah, good afternoon, Chair. I can see and hear you. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Councillor Jim Kenyon. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you. 
Any members of the committee are equipped as a voting right to join the meeting remotely and not able to vote, we reminded, on any resolutions of the committee, but may otherwise participate in the debate. And I confirm we do have more than a quarter of councillors who can vote. So also joining us remotely today, we have, and I apologise to all the officers who are having to give their time to attend the meeting, but thank you for hanging on. Councillor Dana Toynbee, Cabinet Member of Children and Families. Can you hear us, Councillor Toynbee? Yes, good afternoon. I can hear you, thanks. That's brilliant, thank you. And welcome to Councillor Harvey, Cabinet Member of Finance. Can you hear us, Councillor Harvey? Yes, I can, Chairman, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, too. And officers, uh, Daryl Freeman, Director of Children and Families. I can hear you, thank you, Chairman. You fine, too, thank you. Andrew Lovgo, Chief Finance Officer. I can hear you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. And I think we've also got Kim Gaffey of Legal, who's on remote. Can you hear us, Kim? Uh, I don't think she joined the, uh, this particular session, Chair. OK. So Kim isn't there, I'm assuming. Is there anybody who I haven't mentioned who is remote? That's the time. I can't see the screen at the moment. So anybody I've missed, please, if you'd like to speak up. Yes, I'm here, Chair. Councillor Graham Andrews. Oh, hello, Graham. Thanks. That's good to see you. Uh, anyone else who would like to introduce themselves? Uh, we haven't so far acknowledged. It's just got a call to go. Confirm. Because yeah. I'm subbing for Councillor Graham Andrews. Glad you mentioned that already. Yeah. Yes. So we've got everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor David Hitchener, I'm here as well. Oh, David. Oh, good. Thank you. I thought I saw you earlier. Thanks for acknowledging. Now we can hear you fine. No one else? Okay. Yes, Chair. Um, it, oh. Sorry, sorry, Chair. It's Councillor Pauline Crockett, Cabinet Member for Health and Adult Wellbeing. Yes, sir, Pauline. I did see you earlier, but I wasn't sure if you'd come back. So welcome to you. Yes, we can hear you fine as well. Thank you. I'll move on to apologies for absence then. I think we've had two apologies one from uh, Sam Clark, the cooperative member, and uh, Councillor Graham Andrews. You are obviously being substituted by Councillor Paul Andrews, who will vote in your stead today but thank you for joining and listening in anyway yeah that's fine no worries thank you declaration of interest do any members wish to declare any schedule one schedule two or other interest in any of today's agenda items no interest i'll move on Questions from the members of the public. We've had one question submitted from a member of the public. The questions and response have been published in the supplement to the agenda papers. I'll now ask the clerk to confirm if there is any supplementary question from the member of the public. Uh, Chair, I don't believe that we've received a, a supplementary in writing yet. No, I haven't been advised of that either. Uh, and uh, item five of the agenda questions from members of the council. No questions have been received from councillors. So we move on to the main purpose, and the only real purpose we're here today is the 2023 budget setting. This is to seek the views of the Children and Young People Scrutiny Committee on the budget proposals 2022-23 as they relate to the remit of the committee. So we've been asked to consider the budget proposals, as I said, for 2022-23. So I'd like to invite Andrew Logan of our Chief Finance Officer to introduce his item, please. Over to you, Andrew. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, We've got a short presentation. I'm in your hands. I'm very happy to run through the presentation or move straight to questions. And what would you like us to to do for you? I think it would be good to run some of the key points, particularly on Children's Scrutiny Committee at Children's Services. You did do a presentation to us, I think, sometime early December, which was a forerunner for this meeting. So it would be, I think, quite handy just to go some of those points. You did raise one or two issues that. As they affected children's services, and I think you'd be because we've got a lot of data here, it'd be quite good if you can pick out some of the key highlights for us, please. Yeah, very happy to do that. Um, should we share the slides so that people can see them? If that's probably the best way, if we're going to that's pick okay. up and we will go yeah, through, okay. Um, whilst we're just loading those up, uh, since we last met, the government has um produced the settlement for local government that came out on the I think the 16th of December so about three weeks ago if we recall back in October when the Chancellor stood up and announced the budget there was a three-year settlement for uh, three-year allocation of funding for local government as part of the, the budget uh, back in October 
Uh, what we had in December was a one year settlement. So we've had clarity from government for the funding for local government for the next year, 22, 23. And what we're being told is for the years, two years beyond that, uh, we will get that at some point, well, later in this year, it's probably towards the end of 22, uh, 22 now. In terms of headlines, there was no big surprises in terms of the settlements that were allocated. So that, that's a good position for the Scouts to be in. So it's broadly in line with um, the assumptions we used in setting the budget. Now, we're here to talk about the budget that affects um, this committee, but in, in terms of the wider council, that's broadly in line with where we're expecting it to be. So the headline figure of the proposed council tax increase is 2.99%. That is 1.99% for the general council tax needs of the council, an additional 1% for adult social care grant, um, which we are entitled to raise. And the proposal going through to full council uh, in a few weeks time is that the, the increase is 2.99. So I wanted to make that clear uh, for the committee there uh, going through. Uh, this process. So if we could go to the to the next slide on that. So what we've got here is a, is a summary of the, the draft budget for 22-23, uh, showing quite an increase from on the base budget, but that's because of a number of the pressures, which we'll talk you through on there. Um, Daryl, would it, would it make sense for, for you to pick up at this point, if that's okay, uh, in terms of the the detail here? Um, yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, so uh, I will. I won't go line by line. Uh, what you'll see, uh, colleagues, though, is a significant pressure uh, on um, looked after children. Uh, that's not. Um, uh, that that's not about the the numbers of looked after children. Uh, so we are not expecting a significant rise in the numbers of children coming into our care during the year. And in fact, members uh, will be will be pleased to know that actually, fact, steadily for the last three years. We've seen a decline in the rate at which children come into our care. Uh, but what that reflects is the pressure on the placements budget. Um, many of the children in our care have incredibly complex needs and sourcing an appropriate placement or home uh, for those children uh, is a real challenge for us at the moment. Um, uh, it's a market that's under a great deal of stress and pressure uh, and, and incredibly competitive. And we have few local options. So, so the significant pressure there. Uh, is, is on placements for the year ahead. Um, some of the solutions that we're considering um, uh, in terms of how we might improve our placement sufficiency are longer term plans and won't come into effect or have an outcome uh, during this next uh, financial year. Um, some of the other, uh, so additional needs, uh, that's very much around uh, what we'll start to see this year is a pressure on our um, uh, high needs block uh, this council has been in a fortunate position for some years now compared to many other local authorities that we haven't seen a significant pressure on high needs uh, that will start to emerge in this year uh, as demand uh, increases. Um, and I think uh, other than uh, those are kind of the big ticket ones, I think I'll just leave that at that, Andrew, for the moment. Um, obviously, we've um, shared the slides and I'll happily answer questions with you later. Thank you. So, yeah, do we even have some more points, or is it now us to ask questions? Well, I, I, I'm very happy for, for you to ask questions. I, um, I could spend a lot of time talking through the detail, but I think it's really the, your opportunity to ask questions and, and to, to to ask for further explanations. Okay, I think one question that I'd like to ask, I, I know Councillor Summers was here with the adult scrutiny meeting yesterday, and we learned that we're moving into an all ages commission financing concept and that was something quite new to this committee. Could you explain something about that and how it's relevant to us? So and it's not actually shown here. So is this that's something that affects this year's budget and what impact will it have on it? Perhaps I can um, uh, add something there. Um Chair. So, so all, all age commissioning is, is a concept certainly that um, myself uh, and uh, the acting director for adult services uh, are keen to explore There's some real potential efficiencies uh, and different ways of working um, that we might be able to exploit uh, in future years, certainly, if we consider the commissioning of services from you know, birth right the way through to, to end of life. Um, so, so typically you'd see um, a cliff edge, if you like, between ch uh, children and young people uh, hitting the age of 18, and then we're looking for new placements 
uh, as they go into adult services um, by having a much more longer term and all age uh, plan around commissioning. Um, that'll be a better outcome for children, young people, young adults in terms of uh, greater continuity of service uh, and uh, provision. Um, uh, but also will allow us longer term planning in terms of uh, commissioning and finance. So we're at the very early stages of thinking and, and indeed delivering on anything like that. But that, but that's an exciting prospect for us. Our, our colleagues in adult communities have a, have a, um, a track record of, of effective and efficient commissioning. Um, and uh, we, we, we can learn um, from that. Uh, uh, and, and also we, there's a recognition that the needs of adults are different to children's in terms of how we commission. But we do think there's some efficiencies going forward. Again, the impact uh, and, and intended outcomes won't be seen in this next financial year, but we intend to start putting in place some of the infrastructure and process that will enable that in future years. Great clarification. And presumably also that will come to all council so we can see and understand exactly what's been proposed. Thank you. And just, uh, just can I just comment, Chair, that you, uh, for me, certainly, you're sounding very muffled and distant. I'm struggling oh, to make okay. out what you're saying. Can everybody else hear me okay? Everybody's saying they can't. Okay. Sorry, it looks like it might be your connection, but I will try and speak more clearly. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Summers, who raised the question I heard yesterday, I had a question to ask. Uh, hi, Daryl. Um, I thought it was to give me the impression yesterday that there had been hiring or some that's already in motion on this all ages commissioning group. Uh, is, uh, is Paul down as an all ages commissioner? Or, uh, has anybody been hired for these posts yet? Can you tell uh, me? Not as yet. We've uh, so we, we already have two established uh, commissioning teams. We have a commissioning team in children's and a commissioning team in adults. And uh, due to some of the pressures on the commissioning team, in children's services uh, at the end of last year. Um, that, that team is currently being overseen and, and, uh, and uh, managed by colleagues in adult services. So what, what that will by and large look like is, is um, as we move towards an all age commissioning model, uh, it will look like a merging of, of two posts. So at this point, there's no conversation around um, recruiting dedicated posts. We've yet to do the scoping of what that service will look like and how we can achieve uh, the outcomes the most effectively. Thank you. Thank you. That's clarified. Very well. Uh, Councillor Jones, I have a question. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Jeff. Um, thanks, Andrew, for coming back with the three year um, budget proposals going back to 2019 to um, 2022 23. Uh, and it gives a much better picture, but there's, there's three areas of concern on there. The director's office has gone up incredibly from uh, the budget from 2019-20. Um, so I, I just, why is that? And um, the I can understand the education improvement has gone up considerably as well, but um, could you say about the, um, the other big increase is looked after children? Uh, that's kind of, about 25 percent as well i just wondered what areas are we doing to locate that um, um increase but uh the, the big one for me is the director's office that's gone up incredibly from 2019. Uh, yeah i'm very happy to pick that up uh part of this is about how we record and present information in terms of where costs were booked um, as you will know, this administration is very clear to be open and transparent around these things. So what you're seeing there is a, a more fair and transparent reporting of where costs lie rather than a significant increase in those costs. So that, that we've um, improved our practices in terms of how we report those costs. But you, you, so you can see that does show that um, quite a difference across the three years. Uh, in terms of the uh, issues around looked after children. I, I, Daryl, are, are, you, are you in a position to talk about? Because I think that's quite a complicated service driven thing rather than a, a bookkeeping issue. Yeah, so um, so looked after children um, is a, a very broad uh, budget. So I've already spoken to the pressures on the uh, placements because uh, they appear under that budget rather than under commissioning. So uh, there's a significant pressure on the service in the current year and projected for the future year in terms of um, 
uh, placement choice and, and, and the cost of placements at the moment. But it also includes things like um, the cost of special guardianship orders, uh, uh, adoption uh, and fostering and the like. So what we're seeing is uh, a greater number of special guardianship orders and uh, we've got some good data and outcomes for children in relation to adoption. But of course, many of those uh, positive outcomes for children also include financial support for their carers at different times. So what you see there is an, an accumulation of a range of different costs. Um, many of which are about good outcomes for children and young people, but the primary pressure at the heart of that is our placement sufficiency and the cost of placements at this time. The answer, Councillor mm -hmm. Jones? Yeah. Councillor Kenyon, you had your hand. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Uh, you'd be pleased to know a couple of my questions have all been asked by the rest of the committee. Um, but uh, again, uh, drilling down into uh, look, looked after children, I, I like what you're saying there, Donald, but it's quite a jump still. And, and I'd, I'd kind of like to see some more specifics, not in this meeting today, but if something could be put together around where the actual costs are going. You know, um, I, I get what you're saying. Um, I'm not going to harp on about it, but please put something together and send it to us. I mean, uh, agency workers and that sort of stuff, how is the workforce holding up? Because obviously agency workers are, uh, 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 great, they come in and they do a great job, but obviously they're more expensive than people in full-time roles. What, what sort of agency, what, what level of agency have we got now working within children's services um so uh, so for answering the first question yes we'll be happy to provide some additional Thank breakdown um, around uh, the spend on the looked after children's budget uh, and in and, and perhaps also might be helpful to produce some case studies around some of the um some of the types of placement yeah, that we're they having. can get very expensive very quickly i understand they that. do yeah yeah they do uh, in terms of uh, locum costs obviously we are working hard to continue to recruit permanent colleagues and also to retain the colleagues that we've got, but we do have a, a, a proportion of, of locums. Um, in terms of our core establishment, that's sitting at around about 20% uh, of our permanent workforce that are social workers that are locums. Uh, and obviously, as, as members will know, we also have some additional project teams which are supporting the improvement plan. At some point, um, we will make a decision either to cease and end those project teams uh, or to um, or to have a conversation about whether they become part of our permanent base budget going forward. Obviously, that's about capacity. But you're you're quite right, Councillor Kenyon, that uh, agency staff, uh, generally speaking, cost more. Um, in fairness to our agency colleagues, uh, many of them don't necessarily see that in their take-home pay. Uh, a lot of that is about the on costs of of agencies themselves uh, and the and the fees that are associated with that transaction. No, we're pl pleased we got them when we, when we need them. Um, you touched on the funding there then, um, additional funding for a, a additional posts, obviously we're in this special measures. And um, and I, I understand that we're chasing all the additional funding we possibly can get, and we've got a team working on that. Um, if we do manage to attain any funding, will that reflect in next year's budget? Um, if, if we if we are successful in any other um, uh, securing any other grants, that will of course show in in our in our income uh, budget. Uh, the minute we have some support from the DFE uh, for our improvement journey, and obviously um, the the uh, council agreed earlier this year for some significant investment both in in children's services, legal services, and the like, following the High Court judgment, uh, and and, a, and there's a further conversation about what that might look like in the next financial year, separate to this budget. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I'm Councillor Kenyon. Councillor Hewitt next. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, I, I, you know, this isn't my best area of expertise, but looking at the figures and looking at um, everything that we have heard from the improvement journey is that we're struggling to recruit social workers on the ground and that we're not competitive with other authorities and I understand that it's a sort of balancing act between you know finally finally being able to get permanent staff rather than agency staff so that our costs go down but at the moment the the committee is in a difficult position because it it can't see it doesn't have an organogram yet of the directorate so we can't see where there is potential for different groups is essentially doing the same thing at management level and that preventing us from having a freeing up of money to, to maybe improve <coughs> the payment we make to social workers on the ground or to in, indeed employ more social workers and 
So that's one big area that I just, I, I can't make head or tail of. And the other thing is that we have heard time and time again, and I think it's true to say that the, the increase need of effort needs to go into early health, early years. And looking at the figures, that, that doesn't appear to be reflected in the figures. It's been reflected in increase in senior management. And I understand that in a way, as an interim measure, we, we probably needed that. But if we're going to make the improvement, the early years really, really needs to have that help in there. And um, I mean, there are other comments I want to make, and that's about you know the, the um, placements. And because we had a, a presentation this morning from adoption and fostering and saying that we desperately need a residential centre in the county. So that's another area. But um, yeah, in order to unpick this, exactly what Councillor Kenyon was saying, we need some more detail. And we also desperately need that organogram because then we can begin to understand where the roles and responsibilities lie and where, you know, areas of the budget might be overlapping. So that's fine. So, so, so thank you, Councillor. We, um, as, you, as you'll know, we're bringing a workforce paper to a, a future uh, scrutiny committee, uh, and that will include a structure chart that, that better explains and hopefully answers the, the question that you have there in terms of how the organisation uh, sits as an organogram, as you describe it. Um, you're absolutely right that recruitment is, is an incredibly complex challenge for us at this time. Um, there is nationally a shortage of experienced social workers, and it's a highly competitive uh, market. Uh, we struggle to compete both by our geography um, and, and also uh, against rates that shift uh, almost uh, constantly, it seems, uh, in across the region and, and across the country at the moment. Um, I think we, we're working hard with our regional colleagues uh, to, to make sure that we are competitive at the moment. Um, and we're also doing a, a significant amount of work on retention and recruitment and our workforce strategy and developing our offer for permanent colleagues. Our focus very much is on, on recruiting during the spring, uh, many more permanent colleagues, of course, rather, rather than locums. Um, there's a piece of work similarly that we're doing, as indeed our other local authorities, to determine where we, where we struggle to recruit experienced social workers. Might some of the tasks that they do be done by others with different skills, experience and backgrounds? Uh, and of course, in some cases, that might be the case. Uh, and we might uh, be in a better position to recruit more family support workers, personal advisors and the like. Um, but you'll appreciate whilst we're in a non-statutory improvement notice uh, and a recognition, both as a leadership group and as a council, that there is much to do to ensure that our practice and our performance and outcomes for children continue to improve. Um, what our priority right now is that we, we attract experienced social workers, uh, fill those vacancies where we can, uh, and, and make sure that our workers have manageable caseloads and the like. So, um, just to come back, so where is the room in the budget for extra recruitment? Because where, where would I see that in these figures? Uh, well, you'll see that reflected in, in various services in terms of uh, inflation against salaries, as, as you'd see, that's, that's against each of those headings. In terms of the additional capacity uh, for this year, that's, that's funded already primarily by the council and also an element by the DfE up to the 31st of March. And then there's an ongoing conversation at the moment about what that funding in terms of additional capacity will look like for the year ahead. But that's not in this core budget. Okay, so, so it doesn't come in the core budget. Um, why, why can't we see that here? Why, why, is, why does it come from elsewhere? I don't really understand. Possibly Andrew, you might be able to explain Chair, Chair, I'm, I'm happy to pick that question up. Um, what we're asking you to consider today, and this will go through to the 11th of February, is the core budget for the council. So our core activities, our, our recurring activities, things funded by council tax. Um, the improvement work that we've just been discussing uh, is going to be funded by a movement from reserves. I think on the last slide, it provides some of those details. So that work is ongoing and um, it will be coming back to one of your later meetings to do that. And you're already seeing part of the work on the improvement plan and the staffing work. So what we're asking you to consider today is the recurring base budget. So that's the information you've got in front of you in terms of the improvement journey and the work that we need to look that will be through a separate process with separate decisions around um, the shape and scope of that improvement process and the funding will come from 
uh, earmarked reserves from the council through a separate process. So increase in social workers is coming from, is being, that, that's considered to be improvement work and is funded from elsewhere, is that correct? Uh, no, <laughs> Councillor, I'm the improvement in, in wages and rates we're paying uh, recurring existing staff is, is built into this budget. Yeah. As part of the improvements process, we will be taking on additional staff to help uh, as improve our services and the, the professional practice. Those additional temporary staff as part of that improvement process will be uh, funded from reserves. And part of that improvement process is to paint the, 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 what the future shape of the service will look like. We're not there yet because that work is still concluding. So that will be a subject to further budget proposals, not a, um, on the 11th of February, probably next year's budget, because there is going to be quite a time to, to help bed in those improvements. Yeah, thank you. And Councillor Fagan, I know you've had your hand up quite a while, so you're going to ask a question. Sorry to keep you waiting. Yeah, thank you. Um, the, the question really is is about, again, the early help and early years, um, which, I mean, it, it's great to see a, you, you know, a sort of budget that can balance. And But for, for me, the correlation between the costs of looked after children and um, the, the, the kind of increase in that over the past 12 years and the decline of services for early help in early years, the, the, you know, that, that correlation is very stark to me, actually, that it's, it's very obvious. And I, so um, I know Councillor Hewitt asked the question about early help in early years. And I'm just wondering, is, is there, it feels like we're, we're firefighting all the time and we're actually, if, if we could, sort of take a step back and and look at how we support families at the beginning of the journey you, you know would would that have an an impact on the sort of cost of of picking up the pieces afterwards um so i'm just wondering you know would there be opportunities for um sort of to be able to bid for um possible other um projects that actually support uh, younger children, families at the beginning of the stage. I mean, is that something that may emerge over the uh, the course of the financial year, or is it just that the, sort of this is the cycle that we're stuck in, and and now we just have to sort of keep trying to manage? So, so uh, thank you for the question. We, we, I, I, I certainly we're not stuck in a cycle. Certainly, um, some of the money that we recently attracted uh, for grant payment is being used to, to seed some activity to develop um, talk community and, and, and very much focused on how we can embed uh, early help and preventative services in there, where at, where at the moment it's uh, very focused on adult and community services. So that's to be welcomed. We've got a number of additional posts being funded to support that. Uh, as our, uh, from our improvement activity currently, we've already got two, two additional qualified social workers in the early help service. And so we've shifted some resources, although they're being paid for from the, the children's social care element. Um, we, we, we have kind of lent some, some resources to early help and prevention currently. Uh, and we're doing, and there's a number of pieces of work that we're doing at the moment. For example, looking at um, exploitation and neglect to see how we can uh, redirect and channel some of our energies and supports so that there is much more earlier intervention and prevention. And yes, absolutely right, Councillor Fagan, to prevent some of those kind of very complex um, uh, needy arrangements uh, f further down the stream. It mm -hmm. takes a while to shift those resources and to shift that community thinking and that intervention. The work certainly started. Um, what you won't necessarily see is that reflected in this year's budget, but I would certainly expect to see uh, as we get a better grip on commissioning uh, and on placements and the like, our ability to be able to shift resources uh, into earlier help and intervention. Um, uh, rather than us coming back and asking for more money. And what I hope is that we can free up some of the money that we're using differently at the minute uh, and apply that going forward. That's really reassuring. Thank you. Yeah, as a, a follow-on to that, Daryl, uh, take the point that we have a fixed amount of money and if we increase earlier substantially, that would necessarily, given the amount of increases that we can apply, probably at the moment, take money away from other services, which obviously wouldn't help there. Uh, but at some point, we've got to make, surely make some sort of step change to substantially increase the area as budget, well, so we can then, and it's going to take a few years, so that then impacts upon the rest of the costs and hopefully it all reduces them. Um, so is there sort of a problem on Councillor Fader's question about that probably will need an injection of some funding in order to make that step 
investment. And are you saying that's something we'll look at after this year? Is that something we're actively looking at now? How you it? Yeah, that, that's something we're looking at, and it's a, it's a continual process. I don't see early help and social care as two separate and distinct services. They're a continuum of delivery of services as a, and a continuum of need. So uh, what, what I and my uh, leadership team are doing is trying to flex so that we can shift resources as and when we can. But you're absolutely right. At some point, we need to try to address a tipping balance where we can push uh, more resources and more of our energy into earlier intervention. But of course, that's not just a children's services uh, priority or a focus. If we're going to be uh, more effective on uh, prevention and earlier intervention, that includes working with our, our colleagues in a wide range of other agencies, such as health, communities, um, uh, local communities, children's centres and the like. And that's something that Councillor Toynbee and myself are keen to direct the Children and Young People's Partnerships energies into this year, so that we get to the point where during the year we, we start to articulate uh, and describe what we mean by a child-friendly county going forward. Okay, thank you. Councillor Kennedy, is that your same hand as before? We've got a new question to ask. No, I've got a new question, Chairman, if you'll indulge. Of course, yes. Yep, thank you. Um, uh, Liz, I apologise to you because you've probably heard this for 10 years, me harping on about this. Daryl, I've seen many people in your position, and I've said this every time, and perhaps if they'd listened all the years ago, you wouldn't be having the issues you've got now. Um, we certainly need to remove barriers from people to becoming social workers. We need to go our own. There's some fantastic people in Herefordshire that would like to be given the opportunity. We need to run classes. We, we could run a class of 25 people, you know, up, up at the college. Um, I spoke about this before. We could get lecturers in. We could actually train them ourselves. We could employ them if they're coming back into the workforce. We could employ them 16 hours a week as social care assistants. So they're learning the job while they're earning, you know, and then they're able to live because they can be supported by government over and above the 16 hours. This is something we really need to look at now, Daryl. And even if the budget needs to be increased, which it would to do this, a year down the line, you've got 20 few, 25 new uh, social workers. A year after that, you've got another 25. A year after that, you've got another 25. Then all of a sudden, the first year, they're becoming senior social workers and work independently. So you've got this continual... Uh, run of people coming in I think the workforce the social workers that are stretched that are working you know to, uh, the, the elastic band is stretched so far with cases and the like we'll see this coming down the line I think god you know it's like the cavalry coming so this is what we really need to concentrate on is growing our own employ and, and, and using the people of Herefordshire so, so I absolutely agree with you in, in principal councillor Kenyon well uh, let, let's do it Daryl let's do it we we, we can't we, we can't train our own social workers because that's the degree qualification and a yeah, yes we can yes we can but we we can support apprenticeships so and we we're already supporting a number of apprenticeships but when, and we're looking at developing stronger partnerships with local universities um so that we can um uh, recruit yeah. the best best of no, the best. as i was saying about removing barriers you know if you've got a couple of kids and, and you've you, you've got a life and you can't get away to university if we put the courses on here and get lecturers to travel down or do it remotely we can absolutely do it um, so where you said we can't do it, I don't agree. Yes, we need to get perhaps Wolverhampton or Worcester University behind us to do this, but there's no reason why we shouldn't. And if we get on and do it, we'll reap the benefits of, of, of a workforce where we'll be saving 20% of locum additional money. So in a few years' time, it will actually pay for itself. Yeah, so as I say, as I, as I say, we are agreed that we definitely need to grow our own. Um, we are uh, looking to increase the number of social work apprenticeships so people can get into, local people can get into apprenticeships uh, to become yeah. social Is workers. Is that outside of the council? Because before it was, if you work for the council, you could do it. Um, at the moment, that's inside the council. We're looking yeah, well, at how that, we can... That's not, that's, that's a barrier in itself, isn't it? You know? So it's that's something we're, we're looking at as part of our retention and recruitment strategy. And likewise, um, not all of children's services is about social workers. So there's also other uh, posts like p p personal advisors and family support workers, which yep, similarly we can absolutely. support people and grow And they, and they yeah, could, they could do those, and they actually, could do those roles. Jimmy, very good debate on that. I think, uh, come back to Daryl's point, we, we've agreed as a high priority at a future meeting to talk about workforce issues. And one of the things we said early on, being creative, not putting creative ideas of how we can help with the difficulties of recruiting is something we should be doing. And that would obviously be a really appropriate time of which to take your suggestions even further. But I think points well made that, yeah, we do need to be more creative and there's a lot of work to do to make sure we do include enough people to deliver the services. That's obviously a major, a major issue. And Councillor you had your hand up. Did you want to ask a question? 
I just wanted to so really reiterate what um, Councillor Hewitt had been saying, and basically we need more money to pay social workers, in, and and it should be in a budget. I would have thought. I mean, if we're going to put more money to pay social workers and the the staff that do the work more, it needs to be in the budget. Um, and we we heard this morning not enough sufficient business support for foster carers um, they benefit from a duty worker they need funding for all teams i mean this is where we should be putting the money not in senior management yeah, i think to reinforce the point that to both um, council and council of may uh, and i take your point absolutely andrew about this is a, a generic budget of a number of headings of where the money is going to be spent um, what we found, and one of the reasons for the organogram, we recognise there's quite a number of areas in which we need more advanced training to understand exactly what um, children's group services are about. And there are lots of sub-services in these headings that we're still learning. And the workshops we're having to help us to do that. We've had the IRO workshops. We had um, quite a conversation with Andrew about SEND spending when we looked at the budget in December. I'd like to come back to that. And this morning we had a really interesting presentation from the foster and adoption team. And as Cam Thompson said, there are specific questions about where funding is an issue for them. So what we're saying, and I'm sure that's going to come out of a recommendation of this committee, yes, it's fine. We obviously can't present it with every single item of expenditure on a, on a reason like this on a generic budget, but we do need to have much more granular insight into the different subsets of services. Um, on where their finance problems are, so we then can ask the questions and hope help to get that sorted. So taking Count Answer's point, I was going to ask the question this morning when we were discussing with um, the Boston team, we asked the question at the end, what are your financial issues? And they came up with three that they're quite concerned they've got a fourth team called the, the permanence team, which is funded to the end of March with um, specific project teams, but they're wondering whether they're going to get permanent funding because that team is doing useful work, but there seems to be some questions about what their permanent funding is going to be. Um, they also wanted reassurance that in order to fund teams like that, they weren't going to have to take funds from one team to fund that team, because that would be counterproductive. And as uh, Kantanta said, they mentioned about Mosaic, it's a really useful tool, but they want somebody who's a dedicated data analyst for their service to help them understand the data better, and they would really feel that would be very beneficial for them to improve their local services. And the fourth issue, Mr. Is Cancer, you had mentioned was placements. So we're learning that each department has their own particular funding issues. We don't know enough about that. So in some ways, we're going to have to say, OK, fine, we, we've got to accept this budget because we haven't got enough kind of knowledge. But over the next year, as part of the training that we said we need, including your account account, we would like to get more opportunity workshops for us to understand at a more granular level, so we can scrutinise this budget a bit more closely. Yes, Councillor Hewitt, can ask um, a question. You, you may like to come back on those questions about the, the questions from the foster team as well, please. Do you, do you want to answer, Daryl, or shall we just um, vote it? I'm, I'm, I'm also mindful that um, Andrew had his hand up. I didn't know if he wanted to come back on anything um, there before I came in. Uh, if, if I could, Chair, it was just a pick up on the points you've raised. And I think there was a query about does this budget include uh, sufficient provision or, or appropriate provision for um, the cost of recruiting and paying for staff in terms of uh, rate rises and certainly where we build it paying for agents. Uh, it does include those provisions, um, but uh, it's a very fair point and I'm very happy to help support along with Daryl uh, a series of workshops for the committee to understand the granularity of the financial budgets because is is a complex area of the council and it's going through quite a period of change so i'm very happy to to run those sessions along with daryl and, and other members of the team to, to enable you to to understand the granularity and, and then to enable you to ask the, the suitable questions but to come back on the point does this include appropriate pressure for paying workers yes it does that'd be good if they having given us the questions this morning, it'd be good if somebody could go back to the fostering team and say, yeah, should we raise those questions? And these are the answers. That would be useful if somebody could take note of that and do that, please. 
Um, right, Councillor Haley, you've got another question. Yeah, Councilor. there are two points. Um, number one, we had a really good present. I mean, it was just fantastic the presentation this morning from the adoption and fostering service. And um, one of the things that I wanted to comment on was they are doing a ground up approach. And so they're ground up, it's not the right word, but um, from the ground up. So we had a presentation from, I think they were a recently, um, uh, recent um, recruits to the fostering um, service in Herefordshire, some parents who had been on the agency. And, and they did a very, very good PR job. And this is for, for Jim to listen to really, and for Daryl to take note um, about the training, the level of training that's being offered to foster parents in Herefordshire. And that seems to me a very nascent and very good start to the prospect of growing our own and should be, uh, and I would recommend that that you know, that we go back to those people and that we grow it from that seed, because from that seed, we will get more grow your own. I mean, it was remarkable, wasn't it? I think everybody agrees that. Um, I have a question around um, the figures for um, interims. So um, I want to know if the number of interim staff have increased or decreased in the authority in the last six months. Um, and I suppose that's, I, I, I also want to know whether that's the, the case for agency staff, what, what the figures are for that, if we've, if we've got any idea, please. Um, so I guess there's a, um, there's a clarification, I guess, what, what, what you see as the difference between an interim uh, and an agency, because obviously agency, uh, the, the other badge for agency is, is interim. Um, so certainly there's, there's not been an increase in the number of, uh, for example, a couple of members have talked about senior managers. Uh, there's not been an in in increase in those uh, over the last six months. In fact, there's been a reduction as people like myself become permanent. I was an interim, I'm now permanent. Um, and we have uh, one fewer interim assistant director than we had six months ago, for example. So there, in terms of locum social workers, so interim social workers, uh, we have seen an increase. Um, uh, what we've done as, as we've needed to during the year is responded to need and to challenge uh, and we've increased the number of uh, social workers across the board. The only way you can do that in the short to medium term is recruit locums. Uh, we've got some very, very good locum social workers. Um, so that's uh, certainly so certainly we've seen an increase in the number of social workers and team managers to supervise those social workers uh, over the last six months. So um, just to go back to that thing about locum social workers, there's been an increase. And um, I remember you saying, Daryl, that some of those are transferring to being permanent members of staff which is good and I hope that that's still ongoing and increasing but I would assume that since you pay I think a probably a third more for a locum is that about right is it in terms of cost is it about a third more than you would yeah it, it varies on the agency and, and the and the arrangement we've got but it can be anything between a, a quarter and a third in terms of the additional on costs i say most of those are the agency fees themselves yeah yeah well i would assume that as our offer gets better for social workers we may well see some of that money that's being spent on locums being available to employ more social workers because i think that's essentially what we were talking about is yes it would be good to offer more money to the social workers who are there but it would also be good to reduce their workload by having more feet on the ground. And I think that's what the committee here is concerned with, really. Yeah. So, so our goal absolutely is to, to ensure that all, all of our case holding social workers and family support workers and personal advisors have manageable caseloads. And, and, uh, and we're, we're working hard to achieve that. We're not there yet. Um, but yes, absolutely. So that, that's the goal there. Some, some of the additional costs that is around locum isn't necessarily ours to, to, to uh, reallocate into other posts, because of course it's a financial pressure. It's, it's money over and above what we've actually got in the year. Um, but we're working closely with our HR and finance colleagues, and we'll, we'll speak with members when we do the workforce paper uh, on some of the um, uh, opportunities we're trying to create, again, to both grow our own and think differently about how we recruit. So have, have you got um, projected numbers of what would be an ideal on the ground, you know, social worker workforce and how much we're 
how much you know how much of a deficit we have which means that everybody's got too much of a workload or not we're certainly planning to put that sort of detail into the workforce paper that's going okay, to come to, going fine. to come to scrutiny haven't, haven't come with that level of detail for the budget paper. That, that's okay fine yeah. yeah we'll look forward to that thank you all right that's great thank you i've got two quick questions one is a general one on the that budget, income budget, showing at nearly seven million. Can we just have a bit of a breakdown of where that comes from, please, Andrew? Um, sorry, I'm struggling to get myself on mute. Yes. So, uh, which slide are we? Sorry, I've got a number of slides in front of me. In your the second slide, actually, not in the supplement, it showed an income budget of nearly seven million pounds. Uh, well, that, that's made up of, of a number of areas on there. So in terms of uh, where we are paid either by third parties to provide things or it's coming from the school's uh, side of things and we get some money in for looked after children from a range of sources. I haven't got the detail in front of me. I, I can certainly provide that uh, a much more comprehensive uh, summary if that would help. Yes, it was just question it doesn't come from government then it comes from outside bodies who have funds available to help in specific service areas that's the general answer that's it yes, yes it's not specific grants from government so we have to apply for those do we so have to make sure we're aware of them and apply for them uh we do i, I think it's fair to say that uh any grant opportunity we we grab hold of very tightly across the whole council not just in this area uh, this is sort of an area that government have moved away from providing direct grants to the council and when you, your colleagues will see at the general scrutiny the, the gap in the, the infamous crocodile diagram is well over 100 million now in terms of the gap so we have to bid for things from central government so there is a whole um, capacity and skill uh, within the council to make sure these things happen as we did, we've just announced you know, the DFE money that um, the team put a lot of evidence to, to, to bid for, and we were successful. Yeah, that's interesting insight. Thank you. Uh, and a question also had when we talked about the budget generically in December, I think it was, I think you raised the issue that probably an area that's difficult, most difficult in allocation funding was the SEND education. And we had quite a discussion about that, we remember, and uh, so it was raised raise it today to say how do we feel that we're able to adequately fund the need for education in the county? Uh, I, yes chair that, that is a, a very uh, challenging issue for, for lots of authorities across the country um, on their uh, heritage I'm, I'm happy to say we're, we're, we're behind the curve so uh, historically we've managed to um, match the, the 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 demand for send activities with the government funding that comes through and that's credit to colleagues who have a, a good relationship with the schools forum and with, with head teachers across the authority but we are in the process of we think for 2023 reaching that point where the funding won't cover all of the costs on that and that's built into one of the budget pressures uh, for the year coming forward now we're working very closely with uh, arrangements for uh, their teachers to minimise that, but that is a, an area that uh, we're paying close attention to. And it's an area, to be fair, that government are aware of the challenge and other councils who have you know, um, significant issues in this area are raising this with ministers. But it's an area that 22-23, um, we think that we will reach the point where uh, there will be a slight pressure, which is built into the, into the budget bid. Thank you. It's only for scrutiny to that. Look in more detail in one of our work sessions in the not too far distant future. Thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Savage, you have another question. Thank you, Chair. Uh, you just answered the one question that I had was are we getting, are we bidding on all the funds available for schools, etc.? Um, I know it, there, there has been funding available. Uh, it didn't go to all, it didn't go to second, secondary and primary, but I understood there was more money coming through, but it seems that you are doing that anyway and you're on top of it, so thank you. Um, just a simple, what's the cost of becoming a social worker? Now, if I wanted to go out and become a social worker tomorrow, what would I have to do? What would be the costs involved and how long would it take me? 
So you would need to uh, apply to a university that offered a social work degree course or a social work degree programme. And um, so that obviously part of the uh, entry requirement there is that you are able to participate in a university degree level course um, or otherwise perhaps go through um, a preparation for study uh, programme. Uh, and then the, the course itself would be three years. Uh, after qualifying, you would become a newly qualified social worker. Uh, and you would spend a year doing an assessed and supported year in employment um, in any number of, of uh, different local authorities. Um, uh, and then you progress through career progression to a grade of social worker, experienced social worker and the like. So if, if you were able to access a, uh, a social work degree course this coming September, uh, it would be three years qualification, during which time you would be doing placements uh, with a number of providers. So a, there, there are there are other programs that you can do, which is like step up. So where you've already got a degree uh, in an other qualification and you can do a step up program, which is a shorter program. So I would probably be better off starting to try and get a degree as a as a doctor then, because uh, obviously social workers are not paid for that for all that time and money that they're spending. And I think it's something we need to look at if we're going to attract Social workers. Now, I know that's that's not part of the budget, but it, what you've just told me is a long, drawn out process to get nine pounds or ten pounds an hour, which is very poor. And I think we have to look at some way of you know. Obviously, these are these are real professionals. They're they're paying the money. They're getting if they're paying their dues and they're they're educating themselves. We're not helping them very much, even as, you know, I know as a council, we have to watch our budgets and et cetera, et cetera. But if we expect people to put that much effort and money into what they do, we need to come back and look at compensating in some way. Anyway, I'm not sure which, which way or if we can afford it, but we really have to start looking at that. Anyway, thank you. Just, just thank event, you. just event. And, and again, in, in the um, I, I, we, we pay more than the minimum wage for social workers, yes. as do all local authorities. But when we do the workforce paper, we'll certainly put, uh, we'll include an appendix around the, the current salaries. Um, but of course, all students doing degree courses, um, generally speaking, are putting themselves through university uh, with loans and other stuff. So, yeah, it's a very, very complex picture, Councillor Summers, and, and uh, uh, we, we want to do the best that we can to attract. No, I'll just refer back to what I said earlier. You know, if we employ them 16 hours a week, you could pay them through this university thing. We really do need to look. I go on about this all the time, but we really do, do, do need to look at it, Darrell. Which is, which is, which is, which is, which, which is, which is the advantage of the social work apprenticeship as well, um, which is a means of us supporting whilst they're studying. But we'll happily cover, and I'm sure we'll have a, a much broader conversation when we do the workforce paper. That's exactly what we're going to make. That's our opportunity to discuss more. We've had a good debate. We've had a lot of questions asked. Uh, any final questions from councillors? Can't answer the last question, and then we'll. Yes, no, sorry, I just, I just wanted. You have to have a university degree before you can be a, be a, become a social worker. Is it's that, a degree so to be a social worker is a protected status and it's a degree qualification yes okay right, thank you so before we met, draw up our recommendation conclusions could we ask uh, those present to come in members etc to add any comment and Chris, now with you council tell me as the current member for children and families anything you'd like to add to the discussion today yeah just very briefly um thank you to the committee for being so engaged with this i'm really glad, glad you had a workshop on it it's great that you had a workshop with the fostering and adoption team this morning um so from the political point of view it's infuriating that we only have a one-year settlement from the government when they promised us a three-year settlement um that really doesn't help what's already a very difficult situation um yeah as, as we saw as we've seen this afternoon discussions around this are about much more than money so it's 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 really interesting that we're all engaged with each other just discussing priorities recruitment um and early year, the importance of early years and all um all age commissioning and i think there is huge huge opportunity in that um within talk community to to do whole family work so i'm, I'm really glad with what we're doing um on that i agree with councillor kenyon um it, it's very frustrating that we can't you know it would be nice to be accredited and to to run our own social work courses and I'm glad we're doing what we can we need to develop um, our relationship with Worcester University even more and again politically I think it's it's sort of pretty scandalous that in a civilized country you have to pay to train to be a social worker 
Um, and finally, on looked after children, um, I understand the comments about the, the um, big jump in the budget um, for the, the children in our care and the whole of cabinet is really keen to pursue developing our in-house um, provision on that. It's really important. It's better for our budget and above all, it, it's better for the children and young people because we really want to keep them in the county. Thank you. Um, Councillor Harvey, thanks for joining us. Hope the discussion has been insightful and fruitful for you too as a covenant member of finance and that we have set some uncertain questions. Would you like to add any comments to the points that have been raised? Well, I'd like to thank the committee for the uh, the time, energy, and uh, and thought that uh, that have gone into the the questions and the and the debate today. Um, reiterating Councillor Toynbee's point, you know, it, keeping getting a hold on um, the the costs of residential care um, is really important. But as if not more important is giving ourselves options to keep our young people close to Herefordshire rather than having in some instances to be placed you know at significant distances um, from their friends from their family um, you know from their school settings etc you know going into care is, is hugely um, disruptive um, and a, an upsetting process uh, for all sorts of reasons um, being physically removed from your home environment where where that isn't necessary for your personal circumstance um, is is just making life even more difficult um, so being able to offer um, a local option and for that to be you know more under our control than things are at the moment um, will be fantastic and, and we're, we're going to move to that um, you know as as fast as our you know our officers consider it sensible to do that um, but the uh, the shared approach to uh, to commissioning is uh, a step in the right direction and so all the learning that's come from uh, the adult social care journey that's already gone on um, in improving our, our ability to uh, commission um, uh, residential care and, and other sorts of care um, is really important to, to bring into children's directorate and to, to make best use of. Um, haven't really touched on the education side of things. Obviously, that's a really important dimension of the, uh, the work of this directorate and, um, you know, all of our, our schools, their, their performance, the, the quality and, and maintenance of the buildings, the energy efficiency of those buildings, and thinking about how we invest in our young people through our schools um, is a really important dimension of the, the work of the directorate, which, you know, quite often gets overlooked because the things that are happening on the uh, on the social care side of things kind of fill our our, our field of view because they're 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 very urgent. Um, but this is an important sustained long term piece of um, you know part of what the council uh, is responsible for. And um, you know I think we should be um, you know proud of the work that we do in this area and. Uh, the things that we're looking at doing to um, invest in our school stock, um, improve the situations for our, our schools and to be thinking about how we're delivering climate change through that investment programme. So that is that is part of what's going on behind the scenes um, and is buried away in the numbers. But that's uh, that's part of the day job that, that sits behind this budget. So thanks very much for um, for the comments and suggestions um, and hopefully the recommendations that, that come out of this and um, you know the important journey that we're on here yes there is a big investment you know when we were talking about the budget a year ago we weren't anticipating the the kind of challenges that we received through the high court judgments um, that uh, that came to us this year um, and that changed some of the ways in which we have actually undertaken work in this directorate and the way that we've ended up spending our money um, but that's the way things always are you know every plan doesn't um, doesn't survive first engagement with the reality of delivery and um, you know I'd like to thank um, Daryl and uh, and his officer team and all the social workers and staff across the uh, the directorate for you know the work that they've done during what what's been a really bumpy ride this year and you know 
we're all, you know, all behind you and, um, you know, we'll continue to do what we need to do to support you on the journey that we're all making on this. So um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Liz. Yeah, picking up your point about collection locally as much as possible, it was very reassuring today in the excellent two o'clock library posturing. I mean, the workshop programme we're putting in place is having real great benefits for us as a committee to learning more detail just what happens. And they were very switched on to the need to, uh, I think they mentioned a 20 mile limit that they're trying to work to for placements. So any further away, it's not seeing more and more difficult for the young people to be probably looked after and to feel that they're, they're connected with their county. So that was really reassuring that they really were very switched on to that and that the recruitment was to try and make sure as many carers, foster carers as possible were within within that limit. So that was one of the really valuable things we learned this morning, a good point that you raised. And we thank you for your comment. So we've got two more cabinet members, I, um, David as leader and Pauline, whether you either of you wish to make any comment before we move on to our recommendations. Chairman, I would only be saying the same things as they already been said. So I'll uh, I'll save the uh, the space for somebody else. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and for me, Chair, as well, um, I second everything that Councillor Harvey says, and the Directorate had done an amazing job in these difficult times. Um, and I thank you for inviting me to this, because obviously children become um, adults once they've bloomed and grown. Thank you very much. Yeah, the continuity is really important, isn't it? So no, thank you, everybody, for joining us. OK, so we move on to our recommendations. Uh, I suggest we have two. Um, and the first one is that we note and accept the proposed children's and young people's services budget for 2022 and 2023. Uh, and my second recommendation I picked up, I think we all agreed, was that we would like to have over the period of the coming months a greater breakdown of detail of where money is spent on the budget in specific service areas. So we have a greater understanding of where we can scrutinize in future. Those are the two recommendations. I picked up our conversation. A, do you agree with that? And does anybody, any council, have any other, any others to add? Jim's got his hand up, Chair. Oh, sorry, Jim. Yes, thank you for being reminded. Yeah. I haven't got my hand up the chair. Um, it, all I've said on the, the second re recommendation, we don't need to scrutinise it. We just need to be sent it. Um, so I, I, I agree with what you're saying, but basically just send it out so we can look at it and break it down. We don't need another meeting to to, to look at what was being sent out. No, actually, I didn't actually say that. I said that. Yeah, you're quite right. I did add it at the end, but I'm just saying we could greater break down the detail of where money is spent in the budget on specific service areas is provided to the committee. Uh, I, I mean, we may have some workshops like we did today with Boston with uh, some specific service areas, but that information could be provided outside the meeting to take good Other than that, do, does everybody agree those are the two recommendations? So, on the first one, then, would somebody like to propose that we note and accept the proposed children's young people's services budget for 2022 and 2023? Councillor Summers, seconded Councillor Jones, all those in favour? That's unanimous. Mm -hmm. Nobody against, nobody abstaining. So that's unanimous. And the second proposal that the scrutiny committee be provided the greater breakdown and detail of where money is spent in the budget on specific service areas. Councillor Summers proposed, Councillor Hansen seconded. All those in favour? Anyone against? No, you, you weren't against. No, no, I was against. No, 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 to ask Tony if she wants to make a recommendation about the early health year. Oh, I'll ask Tony. Yeah, you didn't, but Jenny is vice chair saying, do you want to start a recommendation about early health years? Could you raise that? That might be something that we could add. Sorry, Chair, I'm, I'm struggling to hear you. Can oh, you? Sorry. Can... Yes, you raised the question of investing more in early health years and seeing that increase as a proportion of the budget for all the reasons we mentioned. And Jenny suggested you might like to suggest we make a recommendation on that. Well, I'd, I mean, I'd be very happy to to make that recommendation because then at least it's it's logged actually. So, uh, yeah, thank thank you, Councillor Hewitt, for for picking that up. Um, and yes, why not? Would you like to give us some wording for that? Or oh, Ben, have you captured that? 
we want to see, um, okay, so just um, to see in future budgeting um, an increase in the allocation for earlier help, early years. Would that satisfy you, Danny? Yes, that's, that's fine, yes, that sounds fine. Right, so are you proposing that then? Oh, no, yeah, we keep coming in the road, shouldn't it? Sorry, yes. So, Councillor Summers, you want to make a point? Yeah, I also want to make a point. So, I'll propose it because we need that. Okay, but so also, I propose it just, and are we going to second it? Yes. Second it. Right. So, yes. Councillor Summers proposed, Councillor is second before we vote. Councillor Summers, you want to make a yeah. point? The All Ages Commissioning. Now, I'm in a bit of a fuddle, a mix up over this right now because last night I heard from Paul Smith that we'd have some, he'd have some answers for us in but five weeks, I believe, or early this year, uh, Daryl is telling us it's a year away. Um, I would like to be kept updated on this. This is a, a big deal as far as I'm concerned. So it covers, it's an umbrella that covers both adults and children, and we need to be kept informed on this. And, and it's, I'm getting mixed signals from different parts of the of different offices. So. I think, Daryl, you did say that as five years progress, we would, the members would be kept in touch with the progress on the thinking in that area. I did, and just to, just to clarify for Councillor Summers, uh, I think I said that the the uh, the impact and outcomes that we're likely to see are going to take about a year, I suspect, to, to, to start to embed. I expect to see the two teams working much closer together in the same sort of timescale that Paul articulated with ESD. And as I said earlier on, we're already, we've already got our children's placements team working alongside the adults placements team, uh, and we'll drive forward some more efficiencies. So yeah, I think that, I think slightly two different messages, but we, Paul and I are, are united on that one. Um, we'll work, we're working closer together in terms of financial benefits. And some of that it's going to take us a year to, to realize. So we'll get we progress along the way. So we can get progress. Reports on it. Rather, yeah, okay, it's not in. Rather than asking. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Right, so we've got a proposal. Proposed and seconded. All those in favour? Right, so, Chairman, can I just come in for a second? Jim, you put your hand up again. Sorry. Yeah, we'll sorry, I haven't had it for a while yes. there. Um, when you say about budget, it's not about budgets, it's emphasis, a bigger emphasis on early, early years. Because you can say give more money to them, but if they don't know what they're going to do with it, um, perhaps they need to be looking at a bigger emphasis on, on, on the budget side of things rather than monetary. That made more sense to me. Yeah, they've probably got a hand in hand, but yes, the fact that there is more emphasis on it. So are you, well, your points no did, you can't obviously vote or not, but thanks. Yeah, to well, well uh, that's, 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 that's another thing, but they say emphasis rather than, you know, if you if you give them more money, they'll spend it. But um, what you want to be saying to them is emphasise what you want to spend it on and make a point for it and bid for it. And, and then it perhaps would be looked upon favourably. I think that's what you need to be emphasising. Okay, we've had a proposal and second of a specific proposal. I think the wording is generic enough to include yeah. the point you're making. Would you happy with that, Tony, as a proposer? Or no, no, the original suggestion idea. You happy with that? Thank you. Yep, that's right. fine. Yep. Okay. All those in favour of that proposal then? No one against. No one abstaining. So that's unanimous as well. So we have three recommendations. Can I ask are you happy then you've got those captured? I think I've just guessed Yeah, thank you. Well, that's the end of the meeting. Thank you very much, everybody. And thanks for putting up with the technical difficulties. Uh, given the nature of the job, I think it proved it was worthwhile coming back and we've still finished series on the extent of the meeting program. So that was a useful exercise in the end, but I'm sure we want to apologize for the technical difficulties. We all know it. And the standard, the date of the next meeting is Tuesday, 22nd of February, 2022, at 2 30. Thanks again, everybody, for attending. Before I close, can I check the Democratic Services team that the live stream has been pitched off and you're no longer broadcasting live or recording?